Our last guide you'll ever need covers how to build a computer from parts, but what it can't cover is what parts you should choose. Within a few months, any recommendation that I make will be hopelessly out of date, and I could build an entire content farm to upload a new build video every single day for the rest of my life, and I wouldn't even scratch the surface of the possible configurations. So how do you go from I want to join the rest of the enlightened gamers on the obviously superior platform to, I now have a cart full of parts that actually work together. Ask the internet perhaps? But where? To find out, we went to not one, not two, but three websites in search of answers. The PC Part Picker Forum, the r slash build a PC subreddit, where we were promptly redirected to r slash build a PC for me, and of course, our very own LinusTechTips.com forum. No matter who wins, I just wanna say a quick thanks to the tech community members who helped my Smurf account, the Fezda boy, configure his very real computer based on very fake requirements, and give a quick thank you to our sponsor. MSI, they've decked their halls with epic savings on PC gaming goodies, and this list of deals is refreshed regularly, so you'll wanna check it more than twice. To save on laptops, desktops, and more, check out all the hashtag MSI deals at the link below. Each one of our interactions started with a simple post explaining our objective. We wanted the best tower we could get for $1,000 with the goal of playing Starfield and maybe streaming a bit. We told them we were aiming for 1080p, that we were in the United States, and that taxes and shipping wouldn't be factored into our budget. Starting with response time, the PC Part Picker Forum was helpful and quick to respond, as was the LTT Forum. But Reddit, well, all right. As I mentioned before, we started in r slash build a PC, but as it turns out, you can't do that there anymore. They have a strict no build spoon feeding requests rule and our post was quickly taken down. Okay, so instead we went to r slash build a PC for me, which unfortunately has less than 1 25th the member count. So we posted and waited and ultimately nobody replied. To be clear, there's definitely activity over there, but our post was flagged as spam and taken down. And when we reached out to the mods, we got no response. So after being ghosted, we defaulted to the $1,000 speed build from their summer 2023 best buy guide. For team Reddit then, I guess credit goes to user xxstefanxx one since they posted the guide. One quick note, by the way, this list uses parametric selection, so it can actually change slightly depending on sales or other discounts. We noticed this after we completed our build and went back to screenshot our parts list and realized that it had actually changed. So your mileage may vary. When we clicked it though, we got a Ryzen 5 5600X using the stock cooler on an ASRock B550M Phantom 4 motherboard. We got a 16 gig kit of reasonably fast DDR4 and an RTX 4070. Now, you might notice for our test builds today that we didn't necessarily worry too much about having the exact same parts, but we did make an effort to ensure that our results would be comparable. So we're using the ATX version of the same MATX motherboard here, a dual fan GPU with similar advertised clock speeds and the same spec of memory, albeit from a different brand. This should be pretty representative. The whole thing is powered by a 650BQ bronze power supply from EVGA and housed in a Fantex Eclipse G300A, the single fan variant, no frills. Our haul came to a total of $1,020.81 without rebates or promos. And honestly, this is really solid and it was a great case to build in. The included fan cable was more than long enough to reach whichever header we wanted, Velcro straps made tying down cables a breeze, and the little channel to the side of the board made getting everything tucked away nice and easy without needing to sit on the back of it to close the panel. That is a, that is a clean looking build. Here's what we're gonna do. Preset high, then we're gonna turn dynamic resolution off and set the render resolution scale to 100%. I left FSR on. And that is a pretty darn smooth, not to mention better looking gaming experience. Imagine that running at native resolution being a good idea. I mean, 1% lows in the 50 FPS range. And this is in a crowded environment with lots of character models all over me. 
I can't fault the results, and you gotta remember that this is while I'm screen recording as well. And besides, if the noise bothers me, I can just put this under the desk, throw my headphones, and it goes away. Just like Starfield. Let's try out CS2. We're just setting up CS2 right now, trying to make sure that we're running the same on all the systems. And they've got this really cool preview of how the game will look when you adjust all of these settings. I love that. My 1% lows are above 100 freaking FPS and my averages are like 250. That's why I'm able to mow down these bots, boys. I mean, there's no doubt that having better gear doesn't hurt for Halo. We're seeing average FPS in the 150 to 160 range and 1% lows above 100. This is a great gaming experience. Next up, PC Part Picker. I was surprised to learn just how active that forum is over there. Not only did we get responses quickly after posting, but almost everyone was welcoming and helpful, even going as far as to provide rationale for their choices and weigh in on the pros and cons of pirating Windows. Ultimately, we settled on this build from JDH underscore N64. It was right on the money for our budget at $1,005.93. Verg Zero's build was also interesting. They were adamant that we would be better off with a 13100F and posted their own list. But because that one came in significantly under budget after we removed the peripherals we said we didn't need and the copy of Windows, sorry, Microsoft, we stuck with JDH's submission. So we ended up with a Ryzen 5 5600 with an entry-level aftermarket air cooler on a Gigabyte B550 board. As for our memory and GPU, we're rocking 16 gigs of DDR4, this time at higher clocks, but looser timings, and a Radeon RX 6800 with a whopping 16 gigs of VRAM. They included only half as much NVMe storage, a little questionable given the size of games these days, but that money was spent wisely on a 750 watt gold rated power supply and a handsome Lee and Lee Landcool 215 ATX mid tower. Ain't she a beauty? Not to mention, super easy to build in. Not only was cable management simple, thanks to the space and tie down support, but it comes with a fan hub and a couple of gigantic front fans that could give this build a leg up in performance if we end up being cooling constrained. This time around, we're on Team Red, so our OBS encoding settings aren't quite the same. Might look a touch blurrier, but our gaming experience should be identical. Let's go ahead and get Starfield. Not gonna lie, before frame view even loaded, I could feel the difference in yeah. the 1% lows, which is funny because it doesn't seem like it should be that different. Our average is down from 90, 100, down to like 65, 70. But a difference in averages is not the kind of thing that you'll feel in the same way that you feel a difference in 1% lows. You could stream still. I could. You could. It also seems to be recovering a little bit. Our CPU is at 40, yeah, 40 degrees. Credit to AMD and Bethesda for their collaboration here, I guess, because this GPU has absolutely no right to be this competitive with the 4070. So let's go to Counter-Strike and see okay, how it see runs. See later, civilians. This seems every bit as smooth and responsive an experience as what we saw before. You know what? When we looked up the 6800 performance characteristics, we were looking at launch reviews because I couldn't remember off the top of my head. And you got that whole AMD fine wine-ness, right? Yeah. Is the 6800 a 4070? Who won't These are damn near the same numbers. They're almost the same. We're averaging more like 200 to 220 or 230. And then our 1% yeah, are anywhere yeah. from like 85 yeah, yeah. to like 110, 120. I mean, the 1% lows is what matters more. Yeah, I know. I think they were more consistent with the previous system, but not, not by much. Something I noticed though, is that while our 1% lows are the same, even when these drops occur, our averages drop a little bit lower during particularly intense periods. Here it's pretty clear that as is tradition, we're more CPU limited than GPU limited. Yeah. CS2 is a darn good experience on this system. It's pretty good. Halo. This is it, moment of truth. Can we beat lows of 120, averages of 160, 170? It's pretty comparable. It's not the same though. FPS is really kind of staying around that 110 range. Yep. Slowly creeping up to like 115, 120 sometimes, but that's about it. I think it's time for us to talk trade-offs here because this is not as obvious a choice as it might seem. 
On the one hand, the 4070 system is probably the better all-rounder. It's got better support for ray tracing, it's got DLSS, but what it lacks compared to our AMD-based system is all the other stuff we were able to get with the money we saved on our GPU. Better case, better power supply, better motherboard, and a better cooler that not only is dead flippin' quiet, our CPU's at 40 degrees. Last but not least, I hope, let's take a look at the rig that I've got a bit of a personal stake in. The entry from our very own LTT forum. It slices, it dices, it hopefully plays games a little bit better than these other two systems. Um, user Y underscore me, well, because you volunteered, uh, starts us off strong with a Ryzen 7 5700X cooled by a Thermalrite Assassin X120 on an ASUS ROG Strix B550E. They managed to squeeze a whopping 32 gigs of 3600 CL18 memory in at the same speeds as the Reddit build with the same one terabyte of NVMe storage, but using a much higher quality drive from Samsung. And they've got a similar class 750 watt 80 plus gold power supply, which is probably a bit overkill for our graphics card because it's a lowly RX 7600. Yeah. It was a good ride while it lasted, but it turns out that what goes up must come down. And I think the sacrifices we made to our GPU in order to have all those other creature comforts are gonna cost us big time in our gaming tests. One really nice inclusion though, was the Fractal Pop Air, which is very pleasant to build in, has great airflow and comes in a variety of colors. That being said, this was the only combination of parts where we needed to run and grab an extra piece a fan extension in order to complete our build since the cable for one of the front fans was a tad short to reach the headers on the motherboard. Before we get into the performance of this build, by the way, one thing I found very interesting about all of these was the obvious importance of case selection to our community members. As someone who is willing to fight through a bad case design in order to achieve a given look or form factor that suits my purposes, I usually don't give much thought to case, but these choices from Fractal, Fantex, and Lee and Lee were all pleasant to work in with enough airflow for modern power hungry components and ample room for cable management. A good case, if well cared for, can last many years and be a very worthwhile investment for your delicate little fingies. But if you're a masochist who likes building in tight cases, hey, at least you can make your life a little bit easier with the stubby screwdriver from lttstore.com. This computer, look, it runs the game but we paid the exact same amount for it that we did for the others, and we're getting some benefits. You know, we've got the fancier motherboard. We have more RAM. We have the more premium SSD that I would actually trust yep. more. But our 1% lows are lower. Yeah. Your average is still around the same, 5560 that we were seeing. Yeah, but that's lower than both the other systems. Yeah, I know. It's very noticeable. When I'm panning around, I can I feel it because it's only 10 FPS difference in the 1% lows. But another way of saying that is about a 30% difference in the most stuttery, laggiest feeling parts. It's very playable. Yeah. Very playable. Yeah. But we paid exactly the same for this system as we did for the other ones. And I'm just not sure if some of the advantages like having more RAM and admittedly a higher quality SSD are worth it. Hey, Time well, for CSGO. 250 on the average? That's higher than the 6800. I think what we're learning then is that CS2, just like its predecessor, is very CPU bottlenecked. Yeah, especially at 1080p. Yep. I was not expecting any wins with how underpowered the 7600 is compared to our other GPUs. Yeah. And how underpowered poor Bot Wesley is here. Boom, got him. You know what? It's worse, but it's still pretty good. This is not bad at all. We're hitting like high 80s, mid 90s for yep. the 1%. 100 ish averages. 110 even. It's absolutely very playable. It's very clear at this point that none of these systems are bad. After our results were so close, we felt it necessary to verify our unscientific findings before throwing anyone under the bus. So we sent all three of our competitors out to the labs team to duke it out. Now, since we can't meaningfully benchmark Starfield yet, we threw a small mix of other games at our systems and tested pure raster performance, as well as streaming on either the CPU or GPU, since NVENC wasn't always an option. And 
the results are in. Wow, what an upset. The 5700X from LTT Forum comes in clutch, really? Oh, when running Dota 2, it was the only system to crack the 200 FPS barrier and remains on top whether you're using GPU or CPU encoding. However, it is clear that this is a heavily CPU bottlenecked game since our X264 encoding dragged everyone down anywhere from 23 to 32%. Yikes. And in our second result, oh no, this is what I was afraid of. For Red Dead Redemption 2, Reddit won by a nose against PC Part Picker and by a country mile against LTT Forum. And we get more of the same story once we start streaming, with LTT Forum falling further behind, though notably staying above that 60 FPS 1% lows threshold. Last but not least, Cyberpunk 2077, The Great Equalizer. But not really, because LTT Forum is firmly in last place again. The only real notable thing here is that PC Par Picker pulls ahead in the 1% lows across all three tests and even squeezes past our Reddit build when using X264. It's obvious now then that, Dota aside, LTT Forum didn't quite make the grade here. Unless esports is your focus, it's almost always better to overspend on your GPU rather than your CPU. There is some merit to building with a higher end CPU first and swapping a better GPU in later, especially if we're on the cusp of a new generation being released or something like that. But that wasn't the challenge today. We wanted performance now, not at some time in the future. So we've got to give the win. I'd say it's a split decision between Reddit and PC Part Picker. I'm also gonna give the win to this segue to our sponsor, Antlion Audio. Their mod mics are beloved by fans of attaching solid, versatile mics to a headset or, I mean, really anything else with a flat surface. However, in-ear monitors don't usually have much of a flat surface on them, so Antlion launched their Chimera line of headsets. The standalone microphone cable will connect to just about any MMCX or 2-pin IEM, so you can turn your in-ear monitors into a comfortable headset, or you can pick up their Chimera Solo, a pair of handcrafted resin IEMs with Antlion's signature dynamic driver for excellent clarity and snappy bass, or upgrade to the Chimera Duo, which adds a single balanced armature to each side for more treble detail. These IEMs and mics are positioned as an outstanding choice for both listening and for gaming, Plus, they include a Y splitter, allowing you to use your monitors, whether you're gaming on a PC with separate jacks or a console that has a four pole combo jack. Click the link in the description to check out how Antlion's Chimera Duo can change the way you play today. If you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to check out our latest secret shopper series. Not everyone wants to build their own computer. Some people like a pre-built. Part one is already out and the rest of them are on their way.